Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to another session of Indian Economy Essentials. And in today's session, let's try and understand what is this liberalized remittance scheme, in short, LRS, and what is the new guideline that has been announced by the government of India connecting the credit cards as well as LRS. Now, first and foremost, let's start with the basics. The concept of LRS, Liberalized Remittance Scheme, is one of the schemes that has been introduced from 2004, was introduced by Reserve Bank of India, under which every resident of India, every resident individuals in India, within India, they were allowed to remit out, take out remittances from India up to $25,000. Again, before you start correcting me, so it is not 25,000, I'm saying to begin with, it was $25,000. Now, what is the meaning of this? Whenever you want to take out the dollars from India, you will have to approach Reserve Bank of India because there are guidelines under the concept of FEMA 2000. Now, RBA not to promote the liberalization of outflow of remittances, introduced the liberalized remittances scheme. Under this, the individuals, I repeat, individuals in India were allowed to remit out. Remit out means simply take out certain number of dollars without having to take any kind of approval or the permission of Reserve Bank of India. Now, what if you want to take out beyond that particular limit? For example, right now, the limit that is allowed under LRS is $250,000 or 250000 dollars. So per annum, that is per financial year, you can simply take out 2.5 lakh dollars out of India. For what purposes? I'll tell in a minute. Now any amount up to this, up to this amount, right, in per or in one financial year, you are simply allowed to take it out of India without having to take any approval of RBI. You don't have to go to RBI, apply for, right, let's say give certain documentation, etc. All of that will not be allowed. Or that is not required, which means the outflow of the dollars will be more liberal now or it will be liberalized by Reserve Bank of India. Now, what if you want to take out more than 2.5 lakh dollars per annum? In such cases, you will have to approach Reserve Bank of India, take the approval of Reserve Bank of India. Now, you will be allowed to take out more than 2.5 lakh dollars per annum. Now, point number two, this was introduced to liberalize the outflow of remittances. Point number two will be, for what purposes you are allowed to take out these dollars from India? For what purposes? I'll just give you a small list. Please have a look at it. You can take out these dollars from India. Take out the dollars for study purposes, for traveling purposes, for providing gift to your relatives who are, right, let's say staying out of India, or to provide for maintenance of relatives. And more importantly, you are also allowed to take out these dollars for investment purposes, for investment purposes. Now, rather than remembering all of them, I would recommend, please remember all of them. You can also do a simple classification of these types of transactions. That is in simple terms, these are transactions can be classified into the current account transactions under the balance of payment and the capital account transactions under the balance of payment. In simple terms, under the liberalized remittance scheme, whatever transactions were allowed were basically falling under the current account as well as the capital account transactions within the balance of payment. Now, point number three, what is the issue? What is the recent change that has been announced? The first change was done by the government in the year 2020. That is the budget for the year 2020 and 2021 when it was announced. Government of India introduced one very important change by amending Income Tax Act. Section 206C of Income Tax Act now stated that LRS, Liberalized Remittances Scheme, under this, annually if you take out more than 7 lakh rupees, 7 lakh rupees, then tax collection at source will be applicable. TCS of 5% would be applicable. Now question arises, what is the concept of a TCS? Tax collection at source. Let me simplify this to you. Imagine, I'll take an example which is there in the current affairs only. 
imagine you want to travel to Europe and when you want to travel to Europe, you want to book certain tickets, you want to book packages, tour packages and if the value of the tour packages crosses the threshold limit that was fixed by the government, then the government would simply impose 5% TCS on this, which means, let's say you have paid certain amount of money, right? I'll take a simple number here, 1 lakh dollars. Imagine you have paid 1 lakh dollars, then 5% of this value will be collected by the service provider and this amount will be given to government. That is a basic idea for tax collection at source. Now, some of you will basically say it is same as a tax deduction at source. There is one more term for you now. One is a TCS and the other one is TDS. Now, please understand the difference here. TCS is generally imposed by a service provider or a goods provider. They will impose it on you, collect it and give it to government. Whereas the context of TDS, tax deduction at source, you are generating certain income, you are earning certain income. From that source of the income, the person who is going to give you that income will hold a certain amount of money, give it to the government. For example, if you are a salaried person, if you are a salaried person, then the company which has employed you will withhold a certain amount of salary, which is income tax, give it to government. That is a tax deduction at source. So government starting from October 2020 introduced the concept of TCS in case of LRS. Again, please remember only when certain thresholds will be crossed. Now the latest announcement of the government of India is the credit card transactions. This is the crux of the discussion now. The credit card transactions that you are going to conduct when you are outside India even these credit card transactions will be counted as a part of liberalized remittances scheme. Now, what is the meaning of this? What is the implication of it? Let's try and understand. Government of India has been or has been receiving lot of applications from lot of stakeholders in the economy saying there are certain problems with the LRS scheme, problems in the sense there are certain loopholes in the LRS scheme which are being misused or abused by certain people in the economy. Now, what do you mean by this? The issue is that whenever credit cards are issued, specifically international credit cards are issued, people are having a limit of more than 2.5 lakh dollars and they are able to use these credit cards for conducting transactions when they are outside India. Now, many of you will simply tell me, but sir, the limit of 2.5 lakh dollars is applicable under LRS. In such cases, how these credit cards are allowed to be issued? That is where one rule will come into picture. There is a rule 7 under FEMA which has been recalled by the government now. Rule 7 basically stated that credit card transactions will not be covered under LRS. I repeat, credit card transactions which are conducted outside India will not be covered under LRS. And that is the reason many of these credit card issuers, specifically international credit card issuers, have issued credit cards with a limit of more than 2.5 lakh dollars. So there are a lot of transactions in terms of dollars by Indians are taking place outside India, but they are not getting reported under LRS. That is one concern. Second very important concern. Second very important concern is that the, the Forex reserves are very, very precious. The Forex reserves are very precious. All of you agree with me? Forex reserves are generally denominated in dollars. But though they are present in different forms, there is gold here, there is STR, there is a reserve tranche, there is a foreign currency asset, there are foreign currencies as well. It is denominated in dollar, but please understand, most of this forex reserves is in the form of foreign currencies itself. In recent times, the foreign currencies or let's say forex reserves have started coming down and again, so for some months they have come down, for some months they have gone up. But point is very simple here, forex reserves are very, very precious to us. But whenever these kind of transactions through credit cards are getting done outside India, these are not getting reported under the LRS. So we do not have the right information regarding how many dollars are coming into India, how many dollars are going out of India. That is the precise reason government of India says, whatever credit card transactions you do now outside India, now they will be counted as a part of LRS, which means 
we will have a better idea about how many dollars are going out of India in the form of the, uh, the credit card transactions. Third one, to bring in parity. To bring in parity between debit card as well as credit card transactions when they are used for buying or right basically conducting transactions outside India. Until now, any international transaction, assuming you are outside India, that you do with a debit card was considered as a part of LRS. Credit card was not considered. Now there is a disparity. Government of India says we will try to bring parity between both of them. That is one more very important reason. And the fourth very important reason is, imagine an Indian customer wants to travel outside India, wants to right, basically book a package. Until now the TDS was applicable on an Indian tour provider. My correction here, TCS was applicable on an Indian tour provider. What if I utilize a foreign service provider? By the virtue of the service provider being a foreign company, a foreign service provider, TCS was not reflective there. And as a result of this, the foreign service providers enjoyed certain advantage. That is, tour package providers from the foreign country enjoyed an advantage over Indian tour package providers. Government of India says even that will be addressed now. So these are some of the reasons citing which government of India has stated that credit card transactions which are done outside India, I repeat, which are done outside India, meaning when you are outside India, you use a credit card to conduct transaction, those transactions will be considered as a part of liberalized remittance scheme. Now, having said so, what are the concerns here? What are the issues regarding this announcement of government of India? What are the problems related to this announcement? Point number one. The, the traveling, right? this is a traveling season. Lot of people, right, are planning for a foreign trip. Lot of people, right, have already planned for a foreign trip. They have already reserved a lot of tickets. They are, right, basically about to take the foreign trip now. And suddenly, government of India says, you will have to cuff up a TCS of 20%. A TCS of 20%. So, point number one is what? Credit card transactions will be covered or will be part of right basically the LRS now in addition to that you will also have to pay a tax collection at source of 20%. Now what is the meaning of it? Let's say you have a credit card you are there in the European market any country within the European continent now you will conduct a transaction of let's say 1 lakh dollars whether you purchase etc whatever it is you will conduct a transaction of 1 lakh dollars which means when you are repaying this 1 lakh dollars to the credit card company, they will collect 20% of this value from you because now there is a TCS of 20% is applicable. Which means you will have to pay a bill of 1.2 lakh dollars now. Don't be, don't be worried. Government says, I will allow you to claim it back. Meaning what? When you are paying the bill, pay this 20,000 dollars extra in the form of tax and later when you are paying the taxes to me, you will have to pay the taxes to me. In such cases, this $20,000, use it as a deduction. Do not pay the taxes, use it as a deduction. Meaning, let's take a simple number here. Whatever the exchange rate, please don't worry. Imagine this $20,000 is equal to 1 lakh rupees. Again, I am saying, I am not taking exact exchange rate. Don't point it out. So, imagine $20,000 is equal to 1 lakh rupees. You are supposed to pay 10 lakh rupees income tax to the government. Government now says don't pay 10 lakh. Out of that 1 lakh you have already paid, pay remaining 9 lakh rupees tax to me. Now some of you will raise one more issue. Sir, what if I am not paying any tax? Or what if I am paying a tax less than 1 lakh rupees? In such cases, you can apply and claim refunds of excess amount of money. So this is one concern. That is you will have to pay a TCS of 20% which means it can cause a certain cash flow issues for you. It can cause a certain cash flow issues for you. Because you are paying money now, later you are supposed to get the refund or claim the deduction. But the argument is when you are supposed to pay the taxes, let's say after 8 months or 9 months, right now you already paid certain amount of taxes. Cash flow issues will be created. Second one, demand for credit card usage for international travel is expected to be hit because of this. Third one, 
right third very important point regarding this issue is the compliance issue compliance means now the credit card companies will have to keep on collecting data from all of you whoever is going to travel will have to create a system right wherein they will have to submit the taxes collected or first collect the tax submit this or give this tax to government of india etc 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 which will basically increase the compliance issue or compliance burden for all the stakeholders in the market so these are the very very important points regarding what is the announcement what is the purpose of this announcement and what are the concerns regarding the announcements done by the government now based on the discussion i have given an mcq here consider the following statements regarding lrs the scheme excludes minors statement 1 is wrong lrs even covers minors it covers even the minors but one condition is that on this right whenever this lrs is used for the minors the legal guardian the legal custodian will have to give the signature the scheme is available only for the current account transaction even this statement is wrong it is available for current account as well as the capital account transactions so both the statements are wrong right option for the question will be option d neither one nor two if you like these initiatives please hit the like button provide your valuable comments in the section below and if you get to subscribe to byju's exam prep is channel kindly do it right now thank you have a great day